It's right. a great transition to your good friend Linda Sarsour. Oh. But Sarsour, by the way, what does it mean in Arabic? Uh, cockroach. Cockroach. Cockroach, okay. <laughs> I like it. You had to think for a second. Cockroach, okay. So let's talk about this woman because she's become a hero of the left. I see Bernie tweeting, uh, you know, I stand with Linda. I've seen people like Van Jones claiming that her critics are bigots. Um, she she really does not like you. I mean, she's she had a tweet from a couple of years ago that was genuinely threatening you if you if you were to live in her city, um, which maybe we'll we'll put the tweet up. Uh, and then she tweeted perhaps the most vile thing that I've seen on Twitter, which was something to the effect of that she would take away that women like you, like Brigitte and Ayan Hirsi Ali, don't deserve their vaginas, and that she would take them away. Now, of course, she knows that Ayan has underwent female genital mutilation. Uh, that Ayan has lived her whole life to defend the Western principles that you're talking about here. So this is pretty obvious to anyone that knows anything about this. It's clear to me what she's doing. She does not care about these women's organizations, and yet she's lauded as a hero of the women's rights movement while they're out there in vagina hats. What is going on here? Linda Sarsour is a very smart woman. I have to give her that because she is a master manipulator knowing exactly how to manipulate the gullibles to advance her cause. Linda Sarsour wants Sharia law, if, if it was up to her, to be the law of the land in the United States. As a matter of fact, she tweeted many times, many times. about how wonderful Sharia law is, how lucky women in Saudi Arabia to live under Sharia <laughs> law just because they have maternity leave much better than us. Did you see the response from the Israeli ambassador or something like I that? Know. It was brilliant. She said something about how, well, under Sharia law in Saudi Arabia, they have three months maternity leave. The Israeli ambassador wrote back, he said, well, our women have four months and they can drive. I yeah, like, oh, you know, I like that, yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah, but what she doesn't mention is that these women in Saudi Arabia, yeah, they may have maternity leave, but they were, did, were they impregnated by consensual sex or were they raped by their husbands? Mm -hmm. Were they beaten into having sex by their husband? Were they, you know, this is where the touchy subject that Americans don't feel comfortable talking about even yeah. uh, on television or radio or anywhere. I think we can be more open even talking on the internet because this is an internet show yeah. um, where we can actually talk about, you know, semi-truth. We can't even be too open. Um, but women in Saudi Arabia are nothing but chattel. That's what the Quran talks about women. Women are second-hand. They're, they're, the, the, the hadith says women are like your field. Plow into them as if you plow into your field. Treat them like barn animals. The Quran looks at women as a material object to you to be used for pleasure and to be used to take care of the household to clean. Basically, a woman is a servant, a cleaner, a factory for making babies and taking care of the babies. That's it. And supplying the pleasure for, for the husband. Um, the husband can divorce her by saying three words, you're divorced, you're divorced, you're divorced. And that's it, she's divorced. Um, no papers required. The women have no right. A woman's testimony, testimony is worth half of that of a man. So this is the type of world that Linda Sarsour wants women in the United States to live under. But, but the gullible women's movement in the United States who came out, they hate the conservative movement so much because the conservative movement is shining a light on what Islam is all about. And because they have gone out of their way to defend um, everything on the left and the Islamic agenda, that in order for them to start even looking at what Sharia law is and how women are treated, would basically make them liars, with egg on their face, that they have fought actually to protect these rights, so they just ignore it completely. They don't yeah. talk about it. So when you see at the Women's March, these women wearing the hijab, or this that picture of the the girl in the niqab, you know, in an American flag niqab, which I, I've mentioned this before, I was in West Hollywood a couple weeks ago, which is quite literally the gayest place on earth, and there was a, a, a bunch of gay guys that sell mannequins, and the one they were all naked, except the one they had dressed was, in, was the niqab. And I thought, you guys, you're in the gayest place on earth, the freest place on earth, to do whatever you want with your life, and you're fetishizing something yeah. that would that would undermine your entire life, if yeah. not destroy your entire life. Oh my gosh. Life. So when you see the hijab at the, at the uh, women's march and all that, it, and knowing what you came from, it must absolutely enrage you. 
Oh, it's very sad. It saddens me because when I see what the American public is trying to sell our daughters and our future generations as acceptable without recognizing the ramification of it, because Americans are not seeing the ramification. When you start seeing hijab popping into a community, that's a sign of radicalization. That's not a sign of progressiveness. It's a sign of going mm -hmm. backward. That's actually the first sign of a radicalization of a community because that means they're becoming more devout, more following uh, the Quran to the letter, oppressing women. A woman in a hijab means you are shameful to look at, you are dirty to look at, therefore you need to be covered because you are a walking sin. So if I am tempted to look at you or to rape you, you made me rape you because you made me see your ankle because it flashed a little bit under the hijab and therefore you deserve to be raped or you deserve to be beaten or you deserve to be abused. What message are we sending our daughters? Yeah, so you basically think that there's there's malicious intent with Sarsour herself, but basically the, the other groups, the, the gay groups and the women's groups and these other progressive groups, they're just being, they just don't know what they're doing. Basically. They don't know like what they're they, doing. They just, I, I would assume some of them do have bad intentions, I think, but I would argue that most of them just don't even understand this, this alliance that ultimately will eat itself. You can't say you're for Muslims and for gay people if those people have competing things. Now, I would right. hope that most of them would forget any of their prejudices and just live together. Right. But the idea of we're for this group and this group, it right. throws out all of the individuals. Right. Like we've, got, we've got to be able to look at the problem we are facing as a society. We all came to America. America is a melting pot. We all came from all over the world. We came here because we loved everything America stands for. You know, I may disagree with this person passionately. I may disagree with Linda Sarsour passionately, but I will fight to the death to make sure that she has the right to say what she needs to say. Even though it makes my skin crawl, she has the right to do that. And look at me, I, I can't even speak on college campuses. I mean, the last college campus I spoke at was the University of Detroit at Ann Arbor. I had to have nine security officers and a canine unit to sniff the auditorium for bombs an hour before I spoke. Yeah. And that's not an American university. All right, you want to find a university we can go to together? Let's find one oh we can go to together my. and just see what happens. Can you, I would love, can you imagine yeah. you and I on the road <laughs> as a team, a conservative uh, national security expert and you as a gay conservative on national security yeah. Yeah. Uh, people? Uh, you know, don't expect people like us to come out and stand for what we believe in, and that is the protection of our country. Yeah. That's what we care about. People are welcome to come here, pray to whatever God they want, build whatever house of worship they want. We are all for that. Our constitution gives them the right to do that. Yeah. I don't care what rocks you believe in, as long as you don't throw those rocks at me wanting to kill me. Yeah. You know? Right. That's what America is all about. So we need to shine a light on the problems and we need our people, all Americans, to develop the backbone to start saying, let's step back and look at the problem that's threatening all of us. Under Sharia law, gays are thrown off of buildings. Women are stoned to death. Women are whipped. Uh, you know, if they are seen kissing a man or if they are impregnated out of wedlock or whatever the case may be, women are forced to marry. Um, women are allowed to be raped and even in their marriages. Is this really what we want in our society? Uh, a woman can be raped and she needs four witnesses to basically, um, for the judge to agree with her that she actually was raped, four yeah. male witnesses. And by the way, we are seeing this leak into Western society. Just in the last couple of weeks, there's been a bunch of stories about for the first time, people are being arrested because of FGM here in the United States. That's right. Yeah. That's but on, right. on the protest front, now protest in and of itself is fine, but how, how is this all connected to what's happening with the left, like this need to silence everybody, so that for someone like you to not be able to go to a college campus, what is that? I mean, that must, for you, knowing from where you came, has got to be a pretty scary thought. Uh, it is a scary thought because I value freedom, because I come from tyranny. I know what it's like to be muzzled uh, and not be able to say what you need to say lest you be killed. Where I come from, any country in the Middle East, I don't care how liberal it is, Jordan, Egypt. So I'm gonna give you the top two liberal countries in the Middle East, Jordan and Egypt. Yeah. If you say anything against the king, or you demonstrate against the king, or you don't agree with something against whatever leader, you are literally rounded on the street corner and thrown in jail, 
period. Your family will never hear from you again. You are tortured, you are beaten, you are raped, you are sodomized, whatever it is. Nobody will come to your aid. And that's Jordan and Egypt. Yeah. So I understand how valuable it is to be able to come together and demonstrate and protest and express our opinion freely. And we are losing that in our country. And the irony is we are losing that because the left who supposedly stands for tolerance and multiculturalism and open-mindedness and fairness are muzzling our speech to be able to say what we need to say and let people decide for themselves. Right, because your story should be a story that the left would love because you are dark-skinned. Yeah. You've come from oppression. You now yeah. are, you're a feminist in that you are, I, I don't know if you consider yeah. yourself a- I am a feminist, yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely. Right, so in, I was gonna feminist. say, you're a woman, you're for yourself and for yeah. other women, okay. Yeah. But all of those things, they, they should love your story. And by the way, what you're saying about, about Jordan, uh, we just did a fan show where I interviewed 20 people from all over the world and I interviewed a bisexual guy in Jordan who was happy to show his face. He said there are, there are gay bars there and he said the one thing that you can't he said he's not, you know, fully out, out like that. Yeah, they can But he said that the out. real risk is that it's not that you would say something about the government, it's that you'd say something about the monarchy, which is exactly what yeah. you just said. Yeah. So, so I, I just I'm illustrating that just because to those so, are the say that you're not you're not exaggerating here. You're making yeah. the point. Yeah. No, I mean, and those are the government. Yeah. When you look at the Middle East, you can identify. I mean, now things are changing, but back up until ten years ago, when you look at the Middle East, you're looking at tribes with flags. Those countries, which we call countries, it's tribes with flags. You can identify every country by one royal family or one dictator. Saudi Arabia, the royal family, Jordan, the royal family, uh, Syria, Assad, uh, Iraq used to be Saddam Hussein. I mean, uh, Egypt, Mubarak, before him was Sadat. I mean, literally yeah. every country by one royal family, which is basically the government. Uh, and so we need to protect freedom of speech in America. It is the most valuable thing we have because they're losing it in Canada. They lost it in Canada. Yeah. They are losing it all over the world. And we cannot allow what's happening in Europe to happen in our country. That's why I launched Act for America, my organization. We are now the largest national security grassroots movement in the United States with over half a million members and over 1,000 chapters nationwide. And I, and I encourage people who are watching us yeah. to join us. Us, become active, uh, become involved. Our members are Christians, Jews, atheists, Buddhists, Hindus, gays, lesbians, people who put I'm their differences aside. I'm guessing you got aside. some Muslims in there too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and we have moderate Muslims speak at our national conference every year. Of course, the left never covers that, you know. Right, right, um, right. But we are people who are bringing Americans together, and we're having a march on June 10th um, coming up. It's a march against Sharia, hashtag march against Sharia. And we already have 17 cities scheduled to have this march, and we haven't even announced it. I'm actually, this is the first right. place I speak All about right, great, it. Great, great. And uh, we want people, because it coincides with the shooting at the Orlando uh, against the gay club, uh, it also now with FGM, we are calling FGM month, uh, the month of May, to shine a light on what's happening in the country. Yeah. Half a million girls in America are subjected and under the danger of undergoing female genital mutilation, according to the CDC. Either have gone or are there a uh, risk of going the uh, female genital mutilation. Yeah, and the when, feminists and the left just simply won't right. touch this. So and meanwhile, we, a, a conservative right-wing maniac is going to is gonna talk right, about this. Right, but we are organizing these marches. Anybody who wants to get involved and march with us, go to our website, uh, actforamerica.org, send us an email, put March Against Sharia, and get involved for more information in your city. So do you see the best way to counter this is, is purely just the free speech thing? I mean, we can, we can talk about the ins and outs all the time, and we can try to expose people like Sarsour and, and the rest of this, but that truly that the sword that we all have to die on is the free speech thing. Is that really the, the only answer to this? It's, it's the only answer that I can come up with, which is why I do the show the way I do it, but. A free speech and activism. Our side doesn't act. They sit around and say, oh my God, I can't believe they're doing this at Sanford. How could they do such a thing? Right, right, right. Our side doesn't show up and demonstrate. Our side doesn't show up and really come together to show, in a show of force yeah. by presence. You know, show up on the streets. The left shows up by the thousands, the tens of thousands. 
We do a rally, you see 100 people show up. We need more people showing up. We need more people active and engaged. And that's why we named the organization Act for America. Not think about America, not hope for America, not wish for America, but act for America, because without action, nothing happens. Uh, we have a national conference coming up in Washington, D.C., October. Uh, I encourage people to go to our website and find out more information about it, ActCon 2017, our national conference. We have 16 members of Congress every year speak at our national conference. It's the largest gathering of Americans of all background meeting with elected officials coming on Washington, D.C. to remind elected officials national security is important. We are fighting for the preservation of our Judeo-Christian culture where everybody can be free, everybody can do whatever they want to do as long as they respect the Constitution and agree that everyone is equal under the law. Yeah, it's interesting to me that you make that distinction, that you're talking about Judeo-Christian culture, but what you're really asking for is that we just be governed by our laws. You're not being, you're not right. saying, and there, there's, a, I think a lot of people, even atheists have a struggle with this, the idea that our foundation sort of is Judeo-Christian, but you're not, you're not asking that anyone be governed under the Old Testament or the no, New no, Testament. No, 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 no. This is purely... A purely cultural, purely secular. When you look at Western civilization, Western civilization was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Don't call them the Ten Commandments, call them principles. You know, do unto others what you want others to do unto you. We are raised with that, whether we're practicing Christians or not. Yeah. My children were raised without the mention of God in my household, complete atheists. Yeah. They didn't know anything about the Bible. They didn't know, I didn't have a Bible in the household, nothing. My children were raised with, do unto others what you want others to do unto you. Be kind, forgive your enemy, forgive those who trespass against you. You're above holding a crudge. Move forward in life, just release them, focus on the good, make good, focus your energy on making the world a better place. Those are Judeo-Christian principles. Yes, they are founded in the Bible, but they are Judeo-Christian principles that everybody in the Western world lives and abides by. And we are truly facing a clash of cultures right now. Yeah, so, so speaking of that clash of cultures, I thought I'd do you a little favor here, because when I was doing research about you, if I look at your Wikipedia, not that I trust, I mean, I don't trust anyone's Wikipedia, but there is this constant theme that you're somehow anti-Muslim, that you're an anti-Muslim bigot or something to that effect. So I thought I would give you the chance to say something about Muslim people. I know you make the distinction between Islam as a set of ideas, you've already you know, briefly mentioned this, and the people. Uh, but if you say something publicly, maybe we can counter a little of the Wikipedia, because I don't sense bigotry from you. I sense someone that's fighting for values consistently, whether the bad ideas were coming from Jews or Christians or wherever else. No. So let's clean it up and see if let's someone puts this on Wikipedia. It up. You know, Wikipedia, you know, anybody can say anything they want on Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So never ever believe Wikipedia yeah. because it's a bunch of lies. We talk to them, we try to change the profile, they will go back immediately, some leftists, and they will change it back to whatever they want to frame. See, they're trying to frame people like you and me in a certain way. This is the war of ideas right now, and they are trying to smear our reputation by coming up with their own language. I am not anti-Muslim. I am anti-ideology that wants to kill free people and subjugate them in the name, right now, in the name of the Islamic religion. I, don't, I would fight with the same passion if crazy Christians were trying to do that or crazy Jews were trying to do that or whatever crazy religion is trying to do that. I am for the human spirit and the individuality of the human spirit. I am the perfect example of a woman who was raised in a bomb shelter, a feminist who came to America, is living the American dream, started her own business. I am all I can be as a person and trying to be better and trying to make the world a better place. I love people. There are Muslims in this world who do not want to have anything to do with the radicals, do not want to kill any ra anybody, have never even read the Quran. And I'll give you this, t I'll, I'll tell you this. My daughter just had a baby. My daughter named her baby Lila after her Muslim best friend. Mm. So my granddaughter <laughs> is named after her Muslim best friend who was with us on Easter Sunday just a couple weeks ago baptizing my grandchild and who is from Pakistan. 
So you tell me, <laughs> am I a racist who hates all Muslims? Right. Which is absolute nonsense. Yeah. You know, but this is how the left is attacking us. The best thing we can do is move forward doing what we do, work with moderate Muslims who love the West as much as we do, who love our values as much as we do, who love our culture as much as we do, and work together to defend our culture against the radicals who want to kill us all. Yeah. Do you think that there's something particularly perverse with the left now? Like for someone like me that's kind of only in this for the last couple of years and I, I used to be a progressive and then I saw what was going on, does it seem worse to you now or am I just kind of new to this over the last couple of years? Like 10 years ago, do you think it was this this bad or the or just that the plans maybe hadn't kind of kicked in yet? It was bad, but it has gotten worse. Because It was bad, but it was not this violent. And maybe because they had Obama in office and so they didn't realize it because people on uh, the right on this specific issue, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go out and smash windows and break windows because I don't I disagree with the speaker. Uh, when Obama was elected, I didn't agree with Obama, but I respected him for the position that he held. And I said, okay, here's our president. We're going to give him a chance. Yeah. And what an amazing country we live in that we were able to elect a black president. This is a testimony about how great America is. I actually cried and I did not vote for Obama, but I had tears in my eyes watching the results of the election, even though it was a mixed emotion of sadness, but at the same time, joy that we as a great nation were able to put our differences aside and be able to elect despite the history a black president and we said you know what we're gonna give him the best shot you didn't see people like me demonstrating breaking windows so the left right now is so intolerant is so vicious in their attacks to the point that if you or me or Milo or Ann Coulter or Ayan Hirsi Ali say anything about anything, we are attacked physically. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a shame that we are to this point in our country. All right, so just a couple other things. And then we're gonna do one bonus segment with you. That part of it, that you've put yourself out there publicly and that people say bad things or that you've had to have police take you at a university or whatever it is. Can you just talk about the cost of that? I know, I know every public person doesn't like talking about it, but there is a cost. And I can see as you sit here and smiling and how passionate you are about all this stuff, that it's not something you focus on. But, because I think people ask me about that a lot. You know, like, what about putting yourself out there? People are afraid to do it. But I, my feeling is we need more people. We, I don't think I'm anyone special. I'm one guy that's doing something that I believe in. But for you, just the cost of the hate. History remembers those who made a difference. And I believe every single one of us in life has a destiny, has a purpose. And every single one of us in life is shaped by the experiences that we go through. And every experience is a preparation. Every experience is a stepping stone to refine us. So we can be instruments of change as adults in our world to make the world a better place. Some of us recognize their purpose and some of us live a lifetime without ever recognizing their purpose. But if you do recognize your purpose and you are fortunate enough to realize the gifts that you have been given, even though you have gotten these gifts through going through hell, like I did, I know that this is my opportunity to be able to speak for my nation and make a difference. I immigrated to the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I wake up every morning and I thank God and our founding fathers that I can fight sitting in my pajamas in front of my computer <laughs> and don't have to brave the snow and valley forge the way our founding fathers suffered and starved and froze. And some of them died broke, giving their life and putting their life on the line to give us the freedoms that we have today. The least we can do is preserve those freedoms for our next generation. You never really own freedom, David. We only take care of freedom and preserve it to the next generation. And I am doing my part as an American, as a brave American in the home of the brave to make sure I follow in the footsteps of our founding fathers and do my part as they entrusted me with that which they have created. I feel it is my duty to make sure to preserve it, to pass it to my children and their American children and many generations to come. That's why we fight. And I am so fortunate that through this fight, and it is a fight for freedom, for liberty, for democracy, for security, for human rights, 
I am privileged to meet the most amazing people that I would never otherwise meet, like sitting here with you today, uh, and meet friends that have become lifelong friends, literally like family to me, that I would never have otherwise met if it wasn't doing for what I do. So do I get depressed doing what I do, talking about terrorism and national security? Of course I do. I'm human like everybody. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes I'm completely depressed over things that are happening. Sometimes I hurt deeply by people who stab me in the back or say bad things about me or even reading my Wikipedia profile. But what keeps me so energized is the American people and the American spirit knowing that we are making a difference. We are growing. We are changing our country. We are fighting. We have a purpose. So when you and I die on our deathbed, we can look back and we can say, I made a difference as we take our last breath. And that's enough for me. Well, I actually had a couple more questions for you, but that, <laughs> that is how you end an interview. We're gonna do a little more for our, for our patron audience. And I thank you for this. This was oh, a pleasure, you. and especially the end. I'm, I'm feeling very energized. <laughs> Uh, for more on Brigitte and her work, Are you check tearing out. Up? You did something. No, it's uh, there's a, the, the lights are getting me. Uh, for more on Brigitte and her work, check out actforamerica.org.